Hey guys, it's Mel and I am back with a life update Q&A. Asked you guys on Instagram to just kind of ask me what you want to know about anything. I feel like it's been a long time since we chatted about things and so here we are. Let's get into it, shall we? Reading these questions as I go so I'm not exactly sure what we're going to talk about today, but here we go. First question is, how are you? Physically and mentally, you're a great person inside out. Mm, thank you. That's super, super sweet. Um, I'm doing well, and I feel like it's been a long time since I can say that and mean it. My life is still very much just all over the place. Not really sure what it's gonna happen even in the next few months, but I'm good. And that's probably why I also feel like I can do this and talk about things with you guys, because I'm, I'm good. So thank you. Ooh, number two, this is a good one. Pros and cons of being a single mom. That's very interesting. I've never thought of it that way. Some pros for me would be that I do enjoy alone time, especially when I'm upset. I do retrieve and I like to keep to myself a little bit. And so being able to do that and not feel like someone else is there. I also get to eat whatever, watch whatever, go to sleep at whenever time I want. I don't really have to ask anyone for anything. It's kind of only up to me what I do. But funny enough, those can also be the same for cons, if that makes sense. A lot of the times you do miss having that support, you know, in those moments when you aren't feeling well and things are rough and stuff like that. I've become so independent and confident in myself and my abilities and all these things, which is super, super awesome. But then also, I sometimes wish I didn't have to do it by myself and I wish I could share that with someone and just like have that partnership, just little things like that. So they kind of go back and forth between being pros and cons. So of course I've gotten a bunch of questions about dating, asking if I'm in a relationship right now, if I've considered dating again and just kind of where I'm at. So let's talk about dating. <laughs> dating is hard. <laughs> dating as a 32 year old divorced mom is so hard you guys literally every decision that i make anything i do every single day has to do with my kids and so it does get a little bit tricky to i guess maybe find that space for myself um and maybe i just haven't gotten there yet i actually did try dating someone um for a little bit there and it just did not work um we just were not for each other and it didn't work out i learned a lot honestly you guys i'm at a place right now where i have really found myself i am pretty okay with me and my kids and i'm content with where we're at getting to experience you know partnership and real love is something that i've always wanted and so it would be very nice to be able to have that but i don't want to settle for just anyone just to feel that you know obviously i'm always going to be learning but i do feel like i now know what i offer and what i'm okay with what i'm not so with that being said if i ever go public with a relationship um you can be sure that we've probably been together for a while and i feel pretty good about a future with them and my heart and my mind are a hundred percent and so yeah that will be the only time you really ever see anything <laughs> so yeah that is where i'm at with the whole dating world do the kids speak spanish well yes and no luca can speak spanish he just is still very shy um so sometimes i just have to like ask him to do it especially if we're around family and things like that um and he will julian not so much he's actually been a little bit more challenging when it comes to the language um i feel like he forgets a lot but he understands for the most part he knows what you're telling him and you know that kind of stuff hopefully they'll both be really really good one day i don't know we'll we'll see another question that i got a lot is about the kids relationship with their dad um how often do they talk how often do they see him that sort of thing this is one of those things where i will never really be able to give you guys like all the details and things like that just because obviously with the kids being involved that's just is a little tricky but i would say that the kids love their dad when they're together they do have a good relationship with each other and that makes them happy but unfortunately 
it's not constant. And that's probably as much as I can say. I have to be super careful about these things because I don't want to speak ill of him or make it a negative situation. It's actually really, really hard already to deal with. They just wish it was more. Um, and so obviously I do too. That would be the most ideal thing. And the next question kind of related to that is about co-parenting and how are him and I doing with that? And that's another very hard one to answer. Honestly, one of the harder things about all of this, and this is just speaking generally, when you are in a relationship and you break up with someone, you, you get to move on and you don't have to be um, in each other's lives. So to break up with someone and have children with them and have to continue some type of relationship for their sake, is really really difficult i want to say that the hardest thing about co-parenting is that two parents need to put their kids first in everything that we do and when that doesn't happen then it makes everything a lot harder yeah unfortunately it's it's not super easy but i'm doing my absolute best and I love these kids more than anything in the world and I want them to be happy with both of their parents and I will always try to achieve that. Ooh, what's the next vacation destination with the kids or without the kids? Um, we are actually going on a trip next week. Ooh. They have a week off for spring break and we're going somewhere that is pretty popular um but i haven't told them yet and so i'm gonna wait you guys can take a guess here in the comments we're going on a road trip so it's not super far um but yeah i'm very excited we haven't been on a trip in a while and i feel like it's gonna be a lot of fun i'm definitely vlogging it so you guys will see all about it when we get back did you first regret getting divorced love you mel oh i love you too i definitely had a very very hard time with it and of course there was a million things that I wanted to change and divorce is not something that I ever wanted. It was hard to accept, but I didn't regret it because there's so much that you learn and see about things after divorce that you're just kind of like, ah, yeah, that makes sense. It's still very painful. It still is not something that I would wish on anybody, but I feel like it definitely is something that needed to happen. How do you manage your time for work and your children? So for those of you who don't know, I do have a part-time job um, at my church during the week. Technically, I still do social media. I know I took a big break and it's been kind of rough, but I have been doing those two for the last couple of years. And honestly, they are amazing because they are super duper flexible and they know that my kids come first. And so they've worked with me in terms of schedule and I'm able to take my kids to school and pick them up, which I know is such a blessing. I know that not everybody gets the opportunity to, to do that when you're a single parent. That probably will be changing very soon because I'm looking to do something that I've always wanted to do, which I'll talk about more later. But currently I have been super blessed to have a flexible schedule. But like I said in the beginning of this video, I have no idea what's gonna happen. Um, but I will try my best. What is the biggest lesson you learned from going through a divorce? Oh man, um, I think the biggest lesson was to love myself. Honestly, that's something that I didn't do for so long. I spent the majority of my young adult life not really choosing me ever. Having to unlearn kind of unhealthy habits and patterns and learn to love myself and see the good in me, gaining some self-esteem and some confidence and that sort of thing truly has changed my life. I was not really in an environment that supported that. So now I'm just like, wow, I like myself and I think I'm pretty cool, you know? And so it took me 32 years to be able to get to that place. And I think that's probably the best thing I could have learned from that. Do your ex-in-laws see your kids? Yes, they do. How can we best support a friend who is going through a divorce? 
Oh, this is hard. Um, my best friend would literally come over and just sit with me. She would literally just listen to me talk and be there while I cried and just gave me company. And that helped so much. And she had great advice and I, I love her so much. But sometimes it was literally just the fact that she was willing to be there and say, yeah, this sucks. You definitely need encouragement and, you know, people that'll be like, hey, it's gonna be okay. Like, you got this, blah, blah, blah. You know, but sometimes you also need the people that will just cry with you. And that was her. And then after we would get through that moment, then she would encourage me and sort of remind me of all the good truth and all the stuff. And then I'd be like, okay, yeah, I got this. Just be there if you can. If you can't physically be there, call. Um, if they have kids, maybe offer to help with the kids, that sort of thing. That's probably the best advice I could give on that. <laughs> do you read the Bible? If so, how many verses, chapters a day? Um, I do read the Bible. So every morning my pastors do a devotional every single day where we read a little bit of the Bible and then we talk about it. And so I'll actually link it here. And then I also like to do my own personal devotional. I use the Bible app. It's the U version. Usually do a page of the devotional every single day. Sometimes I read more than others, but I do like to start my day with it. Before I walk out of the door and face the kids who are about to ask me for a million things, I like to walk out with a good attitude and that is what helps me. You talked about moving. Are you really going to leave California? Um, I talked about this on my Insta story the other day. I will always choose to stay close to my parents, but I don't know how sustainable it will be for me to stay in California on my own with kids. I would much rather have a good life in a different place than like struggle just to stay here, if that makes sense. But not anytime soon, I hope, even though gas prices are like 650. What? We're just gonna move on, cause that's, suggestions, ooh, suggestions, 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 why does that word sound weird? Suggestions slash thoughts on mental health and therapy. I am huge on mental health. I'm already trying to teach my kids all about how important mental health is. Therapy is something that I definitely believe that anybody can benefit off of. Sometimes you just need an unbiased professional who will help you break down the things of life. I've shared on here and on Instagram that I definitely struggle with anxiety. Ever since I was a teenager, I've had many panic attacks as well. The first time I went to therapy, I was about 15 or 16, and I have basically been since then. Once you're able to invest in it as much as you do your physical health, it will change your life. So yes, I am totally, totally a supporter and an advocate of mental health and therapy. A couple of people were asking about just advice when you're going through a hard time. I want to know. <laughs> Most of the time I'm out here just like winging it and hoping for the best. Having a relationship with Christ and a good relationship with the people around me is truly what has saved my life at times. I know that might be a little bit hard for some people to hear, especially like if you're a non-believer, which is totally okay and I love you so much, um, but that is what has helped me. I don't know where I'd be without that. I have gained so much strength, my relationship with Jesus and my identity in that and I have been able to get myself back up and be like okay we're doing this whether or not you like it whether or not it feels good like you are going to be okay but also surrounding yourself with people that are going to speak life and truth into you other than that I would say find beauty in the little things going outside looking at the sky looking at the clouds looking at grass like i think that's even scientifically proven like seeing grass and touching it and stuff like that i think can actually help your brain pretty sure i read that truly just surrounding yourself with like the everyday beauty of life can give you so much joy and just remind yourself of who you are every single day you have a purpose whether or not you feel it or you see it sometimes the hardest parts about us is what adds value to your life. So just don't stop no matter what. If I have been able to do that, trust me, you can too, because I am a mess sometimes. I want you to be so, so happy 
and I know you can be. So don't give up until you get there. So I think that will be it for this life update. Um, thank you so much for sending me questions and for being patient, being supportive, being here. It truly does mean the world to me. I mentioned we are going to be going on a trip next week, so definitely stay tuned for all of that. If you want to see things as they're happening, then definitely head on over to Instagram. I'm pretty active on there. So that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to love one another, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!